Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? I'm sorry, but Gabriel's allowed. I mean, he's out. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Bye bye Good morning. You look like hell. Did you have another nightmare last night? Yes. Because having nightmares is what I do, apparently. Seventh damn night in a row. I told you, it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw with your karma. Unfortunately, I don't think my readers would go for a horror novel about fluffy bunny rabbits. So voodoo it is. You mean your reader? She lives in Wisconsin, doesn't she? Bite me. Hey, what goes on in your bed stays in your bed as far as I'm concerned. I have messages for you when you want them. Don't mind if I do. Do what? Oh, nothing. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? What do you know about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop and museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. Did you find any good voodoo resources for me? The best in the city are supposedly the Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in the French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. If you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. What can you tell me about Narlin? I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. Do you have messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talkative, isn't he? Especially with you. What did he want? He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey, and that he left some photos for you at the station, at the front desk. It's about time. Let me guess. This has to do with the voodoo murders, right? Some kind of inside police information? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new book? Maybe. A writer has a certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you'll never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're going to be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... Uh, that's enough. Thanks. Do you have messages for me? You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Do you have messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. 
What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great. We had a nice little chat about you. Grace? Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. And she sent over that box on the table for you. Tell me about yourself, Grace. What do you want to know? How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know, okay? How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books. And it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. What do you do after work? I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. Oh, I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Cute gargoyle, eh? The gargoyle has no function but sheer ugliness. Not unlike... Oh, never mind. The box has Gabriel's name on it, written in his grandmother's handwriting. Gabriel's father's old sketchbook sits on the top. I can go through the rest of that stuff some other time. Today's newspaper is on the counter. Times dated June 18, 1993. The Aquarius horoscope says, Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. <laughs> right. Books on the table have been chosen for their special appeal. Recent fiction by the biggies. In other words, nothing written by Gabriel. Gabriel can't take that. Gracie's resume. She was way overqualified. And also the only person who applied. I practically own stock in these guys. Those keychains were for a promo I tried once, before I realized it was hopeless. Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. Not so lucky for the rabbit, was it? The Blake Backlash series. My literary claim to fame, such as it is. Local interest piece on the store. It didn't garner the sympathy sales I was hoping for. Someone left those here after Mardi Gras. My spare motorcycle gloves. Someone left those here after Mardi Gras. I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a bit scruffy. I always had a thing for St. George. The one who slew a dragon. Yeah, it's probably bigger than this little guy, though. That's from Graham. She likes to think it means someone's watching over me. I'm not so sure about that, but I don't have a heart to get rid of it. I forget where that came from, but... Seems like a nice place to visit. 
Just a few self-help books. That one on top was a joke gift from Mosley. You can't take two steps down Bourbon Street without ending up with a strand of beads. A book of German poetry that once belonged to Gabriel's grandfather. Gabriel has always found it strangely compelling. Dry drocken creaken in meinen Schlaf, die Seele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraus. Feuerigen Atems, gespaltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kinda creepy though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling this guy was one sick puppy. It's a book about the world of snakes. Hey, that's interesting. Snakes can sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that medieval legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters. They've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Reiser means a journey. I wonder if I'll ever use this stuff. Gabriel looks at the cash register, checking for cobwebs. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the take. Or in the case of St. George's books, the mistake. It's a $20 gift certificate left over from yet another dismal failure of a promotion. I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy Daddy was. The medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you need a touch-up. Gabriel, shut that refrigerator, please. Oh. I can smell it from here. Whimmer. The closet is loaded with white t-shirts. There's one black button-down for those fancy occasions. Hmm, I might be able to use this black shirt. All my clothes look the same, so why change them? A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. The phone is cheap, but functional. I might need a flashlight. The dresser holds a meager supply of underwear and 38 pairs of mismatched socks. It's Gabriel's bed, unmade as usual. It's no use. I can't sleep. Let sleeping lions lie. 
I got that cheap at a garage sale. I always had a thing for lions. The wastebasket overflows with crumpled pages of mediocre glory. If I threw those pages away, they weren't worth reading. Gabriel's desk has been gathering dust since he wrote his last novel. The typewriter is too heavy to lug around. Can't. Writer's block. Dramatic, isn't it? Gabriel didn't need for three weeks after Spurgeon on that coat. He has a thing for black leather. See you later. See ya. Those motorcycles belong to the precinct. They're not nearly as cool as Gabriel's bike. Gabriel looks fondly at his father's sketchbook and charcoal pencil. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook, the way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep chord in Gabriel. So familiar are they, that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Interesting design for a trash can. Must have been on sale at Cops R Us. The desk sergeant looks like a poster boy for heart disease. 30 extra pounds between his armpits and his belt, and a complexion the consistency of gray oatmeal. In other words, a typical product of good southern cooking. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah, I got something for you, all right. As soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. Where is the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. We don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He had hair then. One of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot. A graphic close-up of a victim.
Good day, officer. Yeah, you too. Keep moving. That jazz band is pretty good. Of course, most jazz bands in New Orleans are. You white-faced geek! You wanna eat my fist? A lone drummer beats out a haunting rhythm on a large African drum. It's one of those mimes. Oh boy. You white face geek, you want to eat my fist? Knock it off, you, before I shove this washboard down your throat. Well, I never! Leave me alone, you, you, you man! You white face geek, you want to eat my fist? Hey, cut that out. I told you to stop that. All right, mister, you want some of this? Why, you little... Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Interesting. 
Hey, you, get away from that bike. Sorry. Hey, mostly. Huh? Night, you wiener. I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Uh-huh. Well, I guess I can let you see it. For the book. But don't tell anyone, huh? Definitely another voodoo murder. Same M.O. and no freaking clues. We're still waiting on an ID for the body. Oh, that's disgusting. Isn't this a rather public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're freaking ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports or nothing. Now, who the hell is that? <laughs> Good day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, ma'am. Uh, we got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about. I see. Thank you, Detective. And good day, gentlemen. I'm in love. Forget it. That's Molly Getty. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Nah, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. Well, let's get the meat wagon moving then. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the muck and the water moccasins, though. If you want to talk, I'll be at the station tomorrow. Thanks. There's a pattern to the lines in the sand, but only one small area is clearly defined. Hmm, let me try to copy this down. That's a lot of blood. The marks are actually deep indentations in a regular mesh pattern. Something small and iridescent is barely visible in the sand. I can't even see what I'm trying to pick up. I need a better look. It looks like a scale of some sort. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small, iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me what kind. The banks of Lake Pontchartrain are rich with 
clay deposits. I'll take some of this clay with me. Party time. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research for me? Sure, what? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm. The name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you can get an address... Mm-hmm. The murders, right. I'll see what I can find out. Well, oh, it's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And try not to dream, okay? Good morning, don't you look swell today? Actually, swollen. Mm -hmm. So have some, there's a fresh pot on the table. Seriously, you look like hell. Your hair is sticking straight up like a... Oh, it always does that, never mind. Ha uh ha. -huh. Did you dream about the fire and the hanged guy and that lion thing last night? Leopard, not lion. Did you get anything on Malia Getty? Well, I did get her address, but you're a little out of your league here, big fella. The Gettys own three local hospitals, just to name a few of their assets. They run in very high circles. Did you get an address? I got the address. I suppose this has nothing to do with the fact that Malia Getty is incredibly gorgeous. I should have known you wouldn't go for a rich, ugly socialite. And that address is? Hey, far be it from me to postpone your total humiliation. It's 557 West Ingram. That's the Garden District. Estate City. That's all I wanted to know. 
And yes, my dear, Malaghetti is the most dangerous looking diversion I have ever seen. Ouch. Ugh, men. Stamps dated June 19, 1993. A front page article describes the most recent of the voodoo murders. Gabriel scans it but learns nothing new. The article reiterates that the voodoo aspect of the crime is faked. Gabriel shivers. It looked real enough to him. Elsewhere, there's an article about the history of Jackson Square called the Plaza Dons under French rule. It was used for executions, firing squads, hangings, even impalements and breaking on the wheel. Yikes! Of course, these days, it's mostly a hangout for tourists, street musicians, and local artists. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Chances of a dark star rising on this day. Do not trust your instincts. I feel a dark star rising, all right. Wow. I've got some things I need to do. Good luck. goes back there until I say so, mister. Oh, sorry. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. Mostly, my man. It's you. God help me. Whew, it's hot in here. Moses caught. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. I got those photographs you left for me. Really? Great. What'd you think? Astonishingly lifelike. Yeah, that's what I thought. You got any more ideas for photos for the book? Nope. I think we have everything we need. Okay, but you shouldn't underestimate the power of beefcake, my friend. Do you know anything about the patterns around the bodies? Yeah, weird, huh? All seven victims had those marks around them. We've got all the marks on file, but we haven't figured out what, if anything, they mean. Can I see the other six patterns? Uh, sure. People like that kind of stuff, don't they? Might make the book seem more mysterious. Go talk to Officer Franks. Tell her I said you could see the file.
I'm gonna hit the road. Ciao, baby. Excuse me, officer? Yes? Can you get a file for me? What file would that be? The Voodoo Murders file. Detective Mosley said I could see it. Really? Well, if you said so. There it is. You can look at it all you want, but don't leave this area with it, okay? And no photocopies either, I'm afraid. Of course. I understand completely. Gabriel opens and reads the police file. I'm done. Yeah, thanks. Hey, hey, hey. Night. Come on in. Whew, it's hot in here. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. I got those photographs you left for me. So you said. Did you think of any other shots for the book? A cop off a photo might be nice. You and me? Together? Why not? Of course, you'll have to try to tone down your masculinity. Well, okay. I'll call the police photographer. Uh, Franks, come in here a minute, would you? And bring your camera. I hate to put my coat on. It's so damn hot in here. But a picture is a picture. What did you need, Detective Mosley? We need a picture, please. Make it a good one, eh, sweetheart? Sure, sweetheart. Say, Chintzy. Was there anything else, Knight? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Good God, Knight. Make it fast. Just want to check this machine here. Would you just get in here? Hurry up, would ya? Okay, ready. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you get them developed. Uh, the photos, that is. Yeah, sure. Anything else, Knight? Nope. That's about it. Great. Thanks, Franks. Hey, I made a rhyme. You're astonishing, mostly. Don't call me that in front of the lady, wise guy. Thank God I can take this thing off again. Damn, it's hot. Okay. Anything else? How about getting me some coffee? Coffee? 
You want coffee? Should that surprise you? Nah, you've always been a caffeine addict. It's just that what we got here hardly qualifies. So I'm desperate. It's your stomach. I'll get you some when we're done talking. That long? All right, I'll go now. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. I'll just borrow this badge. Hey, hey, what are you doing with my coat? Nothing. I thought I saw something crawling on it. Just drink this. Thanks, tons. I mean it. Okay, anything else? I'm gonna hit the road. Ciao, baby. dog vendor has set up business in the square. He has his nose buried in a paperback novel. Gabriel notices that it is not one of his. Big surprise. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Yep, I mind all right. Why? Because A, I don't know anything, and B, I'm busy. Oh. A small boy is tap dancing enthusiastically for a doobie dog vendor. The vendor ignores him. You dance pretty well for a kid. Give me some money then. I don't have any. Then don't block the view, mister. Do you do requests? Got any money? Nope. Something to eat? Uh, no. There you have it. No. Can't think of anything at the moment. Okay, then. Oh, hey! Oh, come back here. Hey! Oh, unbelievable. Rotten luck. Gabriel can't reach the drawing from where he is. I have this gift certificate. I'm busy. It's good for $20 at St. George's Books. Finest bookstore in New Orleans. Really? I'll have to check it out sometime. You could take this gift certificate with you, if you'll give me a doobie dog. A doobie dog for a twenty-dollar gift certificate? Sure, here you go. You wouldn't like a doobie dog by any chance. Would I? Thanks, mister. 
You got any special requests? Let me know. You mentioned something about special requests. Yeah, you got one? Can you fit through the bars around the statue? Can I? Just watch me. Good. There's something in there I can't quite reach. Can you reach that piece of paper? Sure thing. Here you go. Thanks, Q. Yup, see ya. Stupid wind. Now I have to start all over. This belongs to you, doesn't it? My drawing. How'd you get it? Oh, it was a bit of a squeeze, but I hate to see you lose your work. I lost my only copy of a manuscript once. Well, you saved my butt. Let me know if I can ever do the same for you, hey? Is there any way you can reconstruct the whole pattern from these partials? Hmm. The pattern is probably circular, and there's some repetition in the elements. Okie dokie. Well, there's... oh, I think there's an area missing. If you could get me any more of these, I'll see what I can do. I have another one of those patterns. Really? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, this is great. I think there's enough overlap now. I'll give it my best shot. I'll show you what I come up with tomorrow. Great. I appreciate it. My name is Detective Mosley. I'm here on police business. Really? How interesting. Uh, wait here. I'll inform Ms. Getty. Ms. Getty will see you. Right this way. Ms. Getty will be down shortly. Thank you. What can I do for you, Detective? Undoubtedly proof that there is a God. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Miss Kitty? I assume that's what you're here for, Detective. Can you tell me anything about what happened out at the lake? I wish I could. But I've never seen or heard anything unusual at the lake. And I do spend quite a bit of time out there. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm no expert. I don't fear them like most people do. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The murders? Only what I read in the papers. And what do you read in the papers? I'm sure you know much more about it than I. Detective. Excuse me, but your eyes are really distracting. 
I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that brownish gold. It's so deep and rich. Man, if I could bottle that, I'd make a fortune. Thank you, Detective. That's an interesting observation, though probably not relevant to your case. A good detective never knows what might be relevant, Miss Giddy. Then you must be truly exceptional at your job. I can't help noticing that you're in incredible shape, Miss Giddy. Your legs are so strong. Do you work out at one of the clubs by the lake? Well, Detective, I do enjoy physical activity. Oh, me too. Actually, I was referring to swimming and modern dance. I can't say that I do much exercising at the lake, though. Ah, well, it was worth asking. I think this has gone on long enough. You're not really a detective, are you? Who, me? Well, I am on this case, Miss Giddy. I saw you at the lake yesterday. I thought you must be with the police since you were there, but you don't act like a police officer. Besides, I'm rather certain that the other man said his name was Mosley. All right, you caught me. I'm not with the police. My name is Gabriel Knight. I'm a writer working with Detective Mosley on a book. Well, Mr. Knight, now that we've established who you are, perhaps you can tell me the real reason you're here. Well, I am researching the book. And I thought you might have seen or heard something at the lake. I don't like liars, Mr. Knight. Okay, okay, you're right. I really just wanted to see you again. You can be mad at me if you want, but I swear I've never done anything like this before. Mr. Knight, you've lied about your identity and wasted my time with meaningless questions. If it weren't vaguely flattering, I'd really be angry. You're lucky I don't call the real police. I think you should go, Mr. Knight. Molly, wait. If you just give me a chance. I've wasted enough time. I'll have Robert show you out. Robert? Show Mr. Knight out, please. I most certainly will. Thank you very much. I had a lovely time. Ah, shit. Welcome, my friend. Hello. I am the proprietor, Dr. John. If you have any questions, I would be happy to assist. Great. My name is Knight, and I'll probably take you up on that. Something about the shape of that knife gives Gabriel the creeps. The voodoo shrine is filled with items that both fascinate Gabriel and also make his skin crawl. Magenta Moonbeam. Voodooian. A flyer advertising Magenta Moonbeam, a local voodooian. Her parlor is on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. A very large, very formidable looking snake is secured in a plexiglass cage. Could I ask you a few questions? That is why I am here. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo. Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city. Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight, and will go on from there at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, voodoo is a grassroots religion, formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade. But African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies, 
with the French and Spanish-ran Plantation Islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importings of slaves from that region. So how did voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring into New Orleans. Some of them were free people of color freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. And what happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight. If only in the form of a communal barn. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou St. John and the shore of Link Pontchartrain. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they call the Great Zombie. Tell me more about historical voodoo. By 1817, the voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons at the place, Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances, right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continued to meet in private for the real thing. Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first, voodoo priests and priestesses, but from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. Tell me about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaus, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. Really? Do you have any run-in this week? No, but the cemetery is open to the general public as well. Tell me about current voodoo. Many people think of voodoo in terms of magic spells or gri-gri. That kind of practice is actually called hoodoo and is only a part of true voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city, and others all across the United States. African Americans see it as a tradition all their own. Whites, and there are many in the religion, are attracted to it because they think it is exotic. I personally am more interested in the history of voodoo. Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo. But it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. Do you know anything about snakes? Ah. You have perhaps noticed the museum snake, Mr. Knight? They are beautiful creatures. Do you not agree? And the tourists seem to associate them with voodoo. What exactly is hoodoo? Hoodoo refers to magic folk traditions of the South. Hoodoo is a bastard of voodoo. Many of the Grigri are similar. 
But Hoodoo does not have the religious aspects of Voodoo. Goodbye, Dr. John. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. A sign on the front door of Magenta's home reads, Attuning with the Spirit Realm, back on June 22nd. Bonjour, Monsieur Walker. Bienvenue, Madame Casano. Comment ça va? How you be feeling today? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Walker. I'm certain someone's buried a sleep not bad. Somewhere near my steps. I haven't slept a wink. Not in weeks. Now don't that beat all. I'll need some easy night candles then, huh? Do you think that would help? I do hope you're right. I said three rosaries this morning for Our Lady's intervention. Rosary good, sure enough, but you buying them candles too, boy, you gonna whip any no-sleep grigri, I tell you for sure. Very well, Mr. Walker. Put them on my account and send them around to my house. Oh, and there's another thing. I didn't catch her at it, but I know. Mrs. Lefebvre put stomachache powder in my tea at the last meeting of the Creole Grand Dame. I've been in misery. Now you put nine pinheads up in the little box. <laughs> Add a pinch of graveyard dust. Put it up under her front post there. That'll turn the trick back on Miss Lefebvre, and she be the one with the belly, eh? <laughs> I got the pins of dust right here if you want them. If the Blessed Virgin will grant me her protection, I'll be safe from these practitioners of evil. We, oui, madame? Though, uh, don't hate to be proactive now, neither now, does it? Naturellement, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Mais non, madame. It's nothing. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur Walker. The sign says, Special St. John's Eve Lagnia. Free bottle of lover come back to me oil, or master gambling oil with every purchase over $50. Lagnia. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. Hi there. Is this your stall? This is the Dixieland Drug Store. And I own it. Me. Name's Walker. Willie Walker. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Caprizonco. What did you say? Nothing. Them killings have nothing to do with my shop, monsieur. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's the biggest night of the year in voodoo. What goes on exactly? I couldn't say. That customer of yours, the little old lady. Customer? The woman I saw in here, Madame Casino, you called her. I don't talk about my customers to men who come in off the street. What did you mean when you said Cabri saint -Cor? I didn't say that. You did. I heard you say it. You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. Do you know anything about snakes? What kind of snakes? Uh, the kind they use in voodoo? Pythons, boas. So I've heard. Really? Do you have one? Are you crazy? What would I want with a python? The mask appears to be made from a real crocodile head. The poster advertises a voodoo play from last fall. The propri... Mind if I ask you a few questions? Ask what you want. I answer what I want. Do you know anything about animal masks? The only one left is Willie Jr. over there. The old crocodile. He's sort of a mascot now, him. About Willie Jr. Would you be willing to let him go? Hmm. Huh. Maybe. For a hundred dollars. A hundred? You gotta be kidding. 
Me and Willie Jr. are very close, no? I couldn't part with him for less. Near the Laveau tomb is a piece of red brick, undoubtedly a cast off from spiritual graffiti writers. Odd looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. I want a copy of these strange marks. The marks are reddish in color and remind Gabriel of crosses. They look like they've been here a few days at least. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? What can I do for you? Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Sure, sure. She was the voodoo queen of New Orleans. A powerful voodoo yen and a powerful sorceress. When evils still come to her tomb, you know. They write secret marks on the walls, leave offerings. Then there's the tourists. They come out of curiosity. As a matter of fact, that big Dr. John fella from that voodoo museum, he's here at least once a day. But Marie Laveau's tomb isn't the only one the believers visit and make markings and leave offerings at. You said there were other marked tombs? Yep. I've seen bull hearts left on tombs in a nest of vulture feathers, pleats of peas and congre, animal parts, human parts even, it looked like. Male parts, if you get my meaning. The nest of one of the great family crypts, mind you. Ah, have them types just pick a spot and stick to it. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery, number one. You know why the dead are buried in tombs and not in the ground, don't you? The water table's too high. Them coffins will float right out of their grave. Ha! Them dead will go floating right down into the quarter. Puss, if it were Mardi Gras, nobody'd even notice. It's a historical place. People buried in here from the Civil War. Back further, too. Take a look around. You'll see. Do you know anything about animal masks? I don't know what you're talking about. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? Why, well, St. John the Baptist is the patron saint of voodoo. Sometimes we get weird goings on in the cemetery on that night. More often on a few nights before. People taking grave dirt, bones, and who know what. That's pretty disgusting. Yep. Don't know what they do in them, but it can't be pretty. Do you have any idea what Capri Sancal means? Nope. Can't say that I do. The imposing tomb is elaborately labeled Getty. An angel draped dramatically over a stone plinth marks the entrance to a large tomb. Hey, Grace, here I am. Oh boy, party time. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research for me? Sure, what? I need you to look up a Madame Casano. Madame Casano? Is she related to the murders the same way your friend Molly Aghetti was? 
Grace, Kazan owes at least 70. As if that makes a difference to you. Okay, I'll see what I can find. Well, it's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And try not to dream, okay? I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got messages when you want them. I also checked out Casino. There are multiple listings in the white pages. I got the page, but you'll have to figure out the right one. Right. Thanks. Now, are you gonna tell me what happened yesterday with Molly Aghetti, or is it just too embarrassing? Mm. Don't tell me you actually got to see her. All as dogs I'll deny. Gabriel, you don't seriously think she's interested. She can have any man in the city. You know, men with bank accounts. You underestimate the Knight family's tragic poet samurai appeal. When Daddy married Mom, she was the hottest catch in town. Hmm. I always suspected there was something fishy in your family tree. But seriously, I think you should be careful. Meow, Grace. I'm serious. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about this. It's called jealousy, my dear. And you're right, you should be jealous of Malia Getty. As should every woman on this planet. I just... Oh, never mind. I'll just fix these books. Your life is in your own slippery little hands. The point is to get it into somebody else's hands. And soon. <laughs> 